Alright, hello everybody, I am Godric Falcar and welcome to The Witcher 3. Now I have played this game just from the beginning and a little bit on my own, but otherwise there hasn't been any more of it on my channel until now. Welcome back to The Witcher 3, as I said previously. There should be an annotation somewhere on the screen right now while I am running around in circles. Um, to the first episode, which is the tutorial and the basic story. I don't know if I will do the whole storyline, but I will do most of the storyline, um, as well as some side quests, some that are more difficult, more annoying, and more interesting. I will also include on these, but not all the side quests, because that's just boring. Um, I may decide to live stream them, we'll see. But anyway, welcome back, and don't forget to pick this up. This is a crystal skull that Yennefer had. in black crystal. Why do I think this is Yen's? Because it is. Um, and if you miss the initial cinematic scene, the I knew. that was in it. How useful they are as creatures. Because you can brew Onward, Roach. Blood. <laughs> no, because by eating rotting corpses, they prevent epidemics. Mm. Did he know they eat the living as well? No. Really upset him too. War is not exactly going our Just way. Just hanging around. We have a side. The northern realms. Radovid's realms, don't you mean? Tamaria and Edirne are no more. Radovid's pledged to restore the old borders. As soon as he wins the war. Oh, <laughs> just run into me, why don't you? That's what keeps us going. Let's go check what's down there real quick. Just real fast, you know, for my own curiosity. I'm pretty sure there's a treasure chest down here being guarded by these wimpy enemies. On guard! Oh wait, this is the wrong sword. On guard! Damn, you're ugly. Yes, they are. All right, what do you got? I'm already getting beaten up. Cool. Got to remember how to play this again. Ah. Okay. That's how you do that. All right. All right. Whoa. On guard. Take that. And his head is off. Alright, so so far this game looks really cool. Um, like I said, I did play a little bit of it. Mostly I just got really good at Gwent, which you'll find out what that is later. But if I were you, and I'm not, but I could be, I would totally loot these two things. Um, these are explosive barrels. If you want to use magic, you can to blow them up, but the odds are you kill yourself. Um, and they have really good beginnings to equipment. So these are what we got to work with. Meditation, which will, uh, in the lower difficulties, restore all of your health. Um, all you have to do is sit here and you just meditate an hour. That's all you need to do. Um, these are different times of day. So nighttime, this is sunset, and then sunrise. But all you need to do is wait an hour, which is one of these little notches. Go out of the menu, and your health is all the way back up again. Very useful in the two lower uh, difficulties, but otherwise you have to drink and eat your fill to restore health, and that's the only way to do it. Obviously, this game's a lot of just collecting things, so we're going to be doing a lot of that. What happened? Did it burn down? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, peasant. It was beautiful. All right, but let's continue on with our storyline. But, oh yes, I was going to go through the inventory and I got distracted by myself. Anyway, oh, see, this is a lot better. Uh, we get intensity, bleeding, plus damage. Whoops, I whipped that out really quick. Well, that sounded dirty. Hunting boots, very helpful. A note from Unifer, which we can read. P.S. I still have the unicorn. That's a story for the beginning of the game. Some tawny owl. Some other stuff in our inventory, and then the Crystal Skull, which is part of a quest which we will most likely give back to Yennefer once we find her. Speaking of that, let's continue on. Sorry for the distraction, but this game is filled with distractions. But that just happens to be one filled with treasure, so it's useful. We going? Help me! 
has gone. Yeah. Come out. Guy's got one hell of a bowl cut. Gods, that was close. I was sure I'd end up like my mare. Provided you got lucky. Your horse died quickly, but griffins like to toy with their prey. Eat it, alive, piece by piece. Oh. <laughs> you'd... you'd like a reward, I suppose. Mm, a few crowns wouldn't hurt, I guess. I use a few this is the beginning of the game. The thing is, I've a meager purse at the moment. Milf Guardians requisitioned my goods. Now this... <laughs> Here. Clearly not amused. Back to the trail. Like I said, leads to the main road and ends there, muddled. You seek someone? Yes, a woman. Yes, a woman. Medium height, long black hair. Seen anyone like that? No, but... There's an inn here in White Orchard. Soul one around gets its share of travelers. Perhaps you'll learn something there? Not a bad idea. Especially since that wound needs cleaning. Ah, beast barely grazed me. But sure, could use a good rye. Nice and cool, you know, straight from a cellar. Let's go. I absolutely love how this game looks. And what I was going to say was, if you noticed in the scene, look, my sword actually did change. Oh, I absolutely love games where your equipment changes. Oh, man. And it's even in the cutscenes, too. It keeps it. So when you get new armor and stuff... Uh, speaking of armor, I look abnormally sleek. Jeez. Fine-tuned. I, I have played the previous two games, the previous two Witchers. And if you want to know a little information about Witchers... They are humans that have been magically modified, and will learn more things as we go along. And I will teach you what I know from the first and so, second game. A griffin this close to the village? Strange. My thoughts exactly. In the forest or the mountain, sure, but here? Near the main road. Maybe it's the war. Corpses everywhere, the stench of blood, burnt flesh. Drives monsters crazy sometimes. The Temerian lilies, they've a right to hang there. This ain't Temeria no more, old man. It's Nilfgaard now. My arse it is. Aw, oh, if only you were a little younger, man. Start a good tavern brawl, I'm sure. We're just about the toughest looking SOPs. I'll not drink with Weaver Lost Freaks. Ooh. Beg your pardon for those thugs. No need. We're used to it. Folk are jumpy around here. Armies just passed through. Now a griffin's prowling about. Mm hmm. Already had the pleasure. One mean beast. Mean? Light way for a hunter to put it. Clawed Lena so bad, poor thing's one foot in the grave. But there's no good to wallow in misfortune. How can I be of service? With a drop of vodka for me. And you? Something to wet your tongue. Hmm. Alright, so, uh, just a little bit of a mention there, that people don't really like witchers. Why? Because there was a giant war back in the day when witchers were created with magic, 
Um, to fight all the mythical creatures, which there's most any mythical creature you can freaking think of in this land. And uh, there was a lot of witchers and they needed them because they went to war because the mythical creatures were killing people like crazy. Now there's not too many mythical beasts. There's still a lot of witchers left. Um, and they're very powerful uh, amplified people. Uh, they have mutations, which is why you've noticed that both of our fellows here, Geralt and his older gentleman here, I forgot his name, they both have cat eyes so they can see better in the dark and fight better and see further away and all that jazz. But let's ask if there's a contract on the Griffin, which is primarily the way uh, witchers make money. Contracts on mythical beast hunting. There a contract on that Griffin? Nay, not at the moment. Used to be. As soon as a beast had built a nest nearby, the alderman would start a collection, or go to the lord for help. Now the alderman don't use the privy without asking the black one's permission first. Kiss ass. And, seems they hanged the lord. So no contract. Shame. We might have done something, but not for free. Uh, normally I wouldn't be that petty, but that is a huge freaking beast. If I'm not getting paid, I don't know if I want to even mess with that thing. Alright, um, so through this playthrough I'm going to try to be a little more quiet than I am in most of my videos. I will talk pretty regularly, but I want to make sure you see all the major scenes, and I will try to be quiet through all of them. But let's go ahead and, uh, use up our extra selections. They always give us a little extra information. Pretty busy place you got. Nations on the move. Some search for kin, others just want to get out of the way of the armies. They all need food, drink, and a night's rest in warmth. So, war's been good for your trade? Aye, so far. But it'd be best to know peace again. Times like these, you never know what tomorrow will bring. Yeah, there's a friggin' griffin outside. You don't know what's gonna happen. Alright, so we're looking for Yennefer. A woman. Looking for a woman. Raven-haired, violet eyes, dresses in black and white, riding in from Willoughby. And, uh, strange as it sounds, lilac and gooseberries might have smelled that. I've not seen nor smelt such a lady. I believe I'd remember. Yeah, especially hard to forget this one. <laughs> Plenty of travelers about, of though. Old man. Folk from all over. Might be worth your while to ask after her. Alright, uh, thanks for your help. I don't think we need to check this out. Inns usually have a lot of food and things, um, which we don't really need at this time. Thanks for everything. She's a nice lady. Am I gonna have to beat up the thugs because they messed with her? Yeah, I'm thinking it. I'm thinking it. I knew what you were thinking. We gotta beat up these thugs, cause they uh, harassing this old woman. Help you bandage that up? Please. I'm not decrepit yet. Then I'll ask about Yennefer. Mm-hmm. Just remember, we'd rather not draw any attention. Seems to be a lot of this kind of uh, thing in games, and by that I mean bad soldiers basically perusing around towns and people disliking them and then pushing themselves on the peasants and stuff and pushing their rule, things like that. That happens a lot in stories like this. Okay, so we need to ask travelers about Yennefer. What do you know about Yennefer, peasant? for someone. And we seek some peace and quiet. Out of my face, freak. For your breath sours my beer. Ooh, it's gonna be like that, is it? Ooh. All right, so this little option with an upside-down triangle missing a little notch there is in terms magic. A witcher has been so amplified with magic over time that they have some ability with magic themselves. And this ability allows you to kind of do a force move from the Star Wars movies where you can kind of wave your hand around, make the symbol, and then bam, people will kind of be a little looser in terms of telling you the truth and more like mind control. So let's do that. Dressed in black and white. Because it gives us experience and it's fun. Folks say the lady rode through the village a few days back. Galloping so fast she knocked Radabor into a ditch. Which way did she go? Dunno. Lots of tracks leading off the main road. 
Could have gone anywhere. Oi, people! The freak's taken Micah's mind! Uh-huh. And I'll take your tongue if you don't shut up. Oof. Harsh. Alright, now don't worry because you can't use that in many of the conversations, and you have to upgrade it pretty regularly to use it anywhere else in the game besides at the beginning, which isn't worth it. And there's a lot of uh, conversations that are completely immune to it, so don't expect it to use it very much. Let's go over and talk to this guy. What are you up to, buddy? What a waste of time! The Earth shall revolve around the sun before you comprehend these rules. Got a minute? Why not? Aldert Git, assistant professor in contemporary history at Oxenford Academy. Going, skip button. Geralt of Rivia, Witcher with tenure. I'm looking for a woman, long hair, dressed in black and white. Seen anyone like that? Of course not. Unlike the populace, I know the horsewoman of war is pure poppycock. Who is the horsewoman of war? You might have some idea of who the horsewoman of war is, because if you watch the beginning cinematic scene, you saw the woman that used magic and kind of changed the tide of battle. So I think that's Yennefer. Let's ask a little bit more about this horsewoman of war. Horsewoman of war? What's that about? Folks say an omen. A beautiful phantom rides the fields at night, looks as you described her, armies follow her, and all who cross her path meet with misfortune. I can vouch for the last bit. <laughs> know where they saw her? <laughs> no facts interest me, not fairy tales. Okay, so that was pretty funny because, uh, well, if you don't know already, Yennefer and Geralt, which is my witcher friend here, which is the main character of the game, are kind of lovers on and off throughout history, and, uh, yeah, that's a thing. He just made a comment about her being kind of fickle and annoying. So, yeah. So why are you here, Not good sir? Not I'd ever expect to find a scholar. Take it you're fleeing the war? Quite the opposite. Chasing it. I'm headed for the front. This one tired of life. I seek knowledge, which I value more than life itself. I have a thirst no dusty old tomes can quench. I wish to see the Nilfgaardian invasion with my own eyes, understand it, and record it all in my chronicle, my magnum opus. Hmm. I believe magnum opus means life story. Ah, it's one of those Latin terms. Okay, go back to your books while you still can, mushroom cap man. Take my advice. Go back to your books while you can. Darn War's Koopa. no game. No faculty meetings to attend. No tenure to gain. End notes to compile. First soldier you seal kill you. Why would he do that? Me? A neutral civilian? A scholar? Boots. Come again? He'll kill you for your boots. <laughs> okay, war make it to Novigrad yet. War reached Novigrad yet? Nope. But it's only a matter of time. Nilfgaard on one bank, Redania on the other. Drooling over the city like dogs over a juicy bone. Many a ruler's choked on that bone. True. We value our liberty in Novigrad, and we know how to fight for it. Good, uh, good. Good man. The scholars especially. The sword is not the only weapon. Do not forget, architects from our academy designed the city walls. Walls no war machine has ever crumbled. Hmm. That's a pretty good point, actually. All right, farewell, good Gotta sir. go. So long. A moment, Witcher. Oh, no. You strike me as a man of the world. Are you familiar with Gwent? No, and I don't have time to learn. But the rules are quite but, simple. Uh, Come actually, on, let's play. I told you earlier that I'm rather good at Gwent, and I am. Um, if you want to skip this part, maybe I'll put an annotation up that'll skip to, uh the next section of the storyline, but I am going to play him and beat him in Gwent. So let's play. Uh, why not? If Splendid. you want some easy done. tips on how to beat this guy and every other person in the game, because I have basically beaten everyone in Gwent when I played this before, then feel free to stick around. It's a relatively quick game in terms. Um, you have three different types of cards. The melee card, the siege card, and the range card. These up here are basically field cards. Um, and you want to get more points than your opponent is the primary idea. 
Biting Frost reduces all the melee to one. Um, Impenetrable Fog reduces all the range to one point. And the same thing with Rain reduces all the siege to one. Clear Weather re basically gets rid of all of these. Even though they do affect your opponent, they affect you as well. So you gotta be careful of that. Um, and then the leaders are pretty important. Only one I have right now can summon an impenetrable fog freely from my deck and play it instantly. So I'll be sure to keep one in my deck so I can do that. Uh, clear weather is not that useful, but we'll keep it around anyway. All right, let's go. Let us begin. I shall go first. All right, so there's two. Oh, okay. Well, I don't need clear weather right now, so that can go away. Um, I want another one of these guys. The guys with the little handshakes. If you put two of the same card next to each other, it doubles both of their scores. So there'd be a four and a four, but then it would double to an eight and an eight, which would be excellent. Biting Frost might come in handy, but I have a lot of melee characters. This character, when you put it down, you get one card uh, from your graveyard, which is very useful. Um, this guy gives one point to all the cards in the same row, so it would give all uh, the same to all the siege it would plus one. So let's get rid of that guy, which I got a crappy card. The point is there's two gems on the left. Um, you have ten cards each, and you're supposed to beat the opponent twice. And then once all the gems are done, whoever loses the gems is the loser, and whoever still has a gem left or both gems is the winner. So let's go ahead and just start with this ranged guy. Doesn't have a lot going on. And you can see the melee row, the siege row, and the range row. Not to be confused with the range rover. All right, I'll put this guy down because I kind of want to use Biting Frost next turn. Not next turn, but next time I defeat him. Unless it comes in handy this turn, because I have a lot of ranged people. Yeah, let's keep going ranged, because I can always Biting Frost and kill all their melee. Not kill them, but uh, just make them sadder than they were before. I'll put down this one point, because you can't reduce a one point. It's already at one point. Hmm, okay, so they have seven in the melee row, and I only have six. So if I reduce them both right now, I would be a point ahead, or we would be equals. Alright, so I'm going to put another one down in the range section. Yes. I am still ahead. Sometimes if they use a lot of cards, it is best to just pass and run them out of cards completely, and then you can beat them easily. So, what I'm going to do now is... let's try Botching Frost. Now I am one point ahead, two points ahead. So it makes them do two. And at this point I have a nice little selection down here still. So I'm just going to pass, which will make them have to put a card down, and then I will be one ahead. Even though they won this round, I will win two in a row. Ooh, I did not know that was a thing. Apparently, if we're tied, they can use their leader ability and win. That is unfortunate. Why did he pass? I don't understand. So, let's go. Siege opponent. And then, because I already have a card down... I can just go ahead and they pass. The thing about passing is it doesn't skip one turn, it skips all your turns. Um, up to the point where your opponent can over um, overclock your number, basically. And so never pass unless you know you can win, because it doesn't skip one round, it skips all of them. But he already passed ahead of time, so all I needed was at least one point. Now there is my ability that triggers. Now I don't have a single ranger on the field, so I can go ahead, use my ability here, and use Impenetrable Fog. And then in that case, any ranger he has will instantly go to one. Now what I want to do is lay you down. Not you, this card. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, he's got Biting Frost. That's annoying. In all terms, um, jeez, oh 
All right, well, the field of battle is a little messed up. Let's put this down, which gets me to revive this. Which gives me another six instantly on the field. Yeah, that was dumb on his part if he's got more melee. All right. I guess I'll just put this guy down. I'm definitely going to win at this point. There's no way he can win. Yeah. Yeah, there's no way he can win. I, I out-carded him. Look at that. Oh, and he passed. And all I need to do... Nope, I passed. And then I won. Excellent. That is how you win at Gwent. Well. You have a knack for this game. If you ever find yourself in Oxenfurt and wish to play a true master, ask for Stepan. A simple innkeep by trade, but a true maestro when it comes to Gwent. I'll remember that. Thanks. Alright, and if you stuck around for Gwent, thank you for that. And if not, welcome back to the storyline. Look, there's Gwent cards on the ground. Why are these Gwent cards on the ground? Anyway, we got a Zoltan Chevet card, which if you played the last game, he was one of the main characters. Um, the good thing about those is you get a specialty card every time you beat someone else in Gwent. Some of the innkeepers you just play for gold, but of course, as you know from all the Witcher's games, or not if you haven't played any of them, then there's always a lot of mini games like arm wrestling and fighting, and Gwent is one in this game, where every time you defeat one of the person in the next part of the quest, which starts out at innkeepers and then goes to very, very rich folks, you get their specialty cards, which are unaffected by the uh, torrential rains and things like that. The field cards, which so they're very good. Let's go ahead and talk to Gunter Odim now. Looking for a woman. Uh, like everyone. Not like everyone. And not just any woman. Mine smells of lilac and gooseberries, dresses in black and white. Two schnapsies. <laughs> It'll lift your spirits. Fine, I'll have a drink. Can we cut to the chase? You seen her or not? Yennefer of Wengerberg. Never mentioned her name. Yet you described her perfectly. And once I hear something, I never forget. Can't help it. How do you know Yennefer? What a question. Master Dandelion's ballads, of course. The only way a humble merchant might hope to rub up against greatness. Unless, that is, he's as lucky as I am. And runs into a very patient witcher. It's a Geralt of Rivia himself. The Butcher of Blaviken. What do you do? Who are you? A mangy vagrant. Gaunter Odim, at your service. Vagrant, that a profession now? Uh, once a merchant of mirrors. The madding crowd dubbed me Master Mirror, or the Man of Glass. You seen Yennefer? Deepest apologies, but I must ask. Is this about love? None of your business. Yes. As a vagrant, I deserve no explanation. What do you know? Tell me. Before you appeared, it never occurred to me that might have been Yennefer. Who would have thought? Get to the point. An elf guardian scout from the local garrison saw her. Where? At their camp. She rode in there. Dark of night. Black and white. Gooseberries and... Yes, I know. Had a terse exchange with the garrison commander and raced off. Where to? <laughs> I'm not omniscient. Ask at the garrison. Thanks. We men of the road must stick together. Perhaps one day I'll be in trouble and you'll be nearby to help. Alright, so that was Gaunter O'Dim. 
And uh, for those of you who are interested, Master Dandelion was the narrator in the last game as well as one of your best friends in almost all of these Witcher games. Um, he is a bard, and he also sleeps around with a lot of women, which we may find out later on in the game, if you know what I mean. And I don't mean we're going to sleep with him, I mean we may have some trouble with him. But I hope he's in this game. Um, primarily he's the narrator of a lot of these, like I said, so maybe he's the narrator of this game. Who knows? Who knows? But I did mute that section just so you guys can hear the storyline and you wouldn't hear me yapping. But Gunter Odim, the man of glass, might be kind of important. All right, so it looks like we're getting in a fist fight. Done drinking. Some scurvy looking mm -hmm. boy. Fuck off. <laughs> Don't want your kind here. Gasp. <laughs> oh, let's use this ability while we still can. I haven't done anything to you, so just calm down. Plus those beautiful XP points. Of course no. I, uh, you've done nothing. Horses work in witchcraft. Get him! You wanna go? Wanna go back? Balls meeting you. Uppercut. Alright, that was a lot of experience we just got. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sit. Sit. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Just sit down. A little bit of a side effect to the magic. Don't worry about it. All right, everybody. So that is The Witcher 3 for now. This will be the end of the first episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoy this game, and I plan to continue playing this. But feel free to leave down in the comments if there's any specific quests you want me to do. Um, if you do want me to continue this, it's, it's all up to you guys. I will probably continue playing on my own, but uh, you guys and girls out there are the reason I do this. So let me know in the comments down below if I should continue. And if you have any suggestions of where I could find some gear, where some good quests, what I should do, blah de blah de blah And I will have some of the uh, side quests that I liked, and uh, some of them I found more difficult just to show all of you or those of you who are playing this game or plan to play this game can uh, figure out those sections. But naturally, I will see all of you in the next video. But bye-bye for now. Bye. 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 bye.